welcome to Reef Tank Adventure episode number 27 and in this episode what I'm going to be doing is basically just giving you a tank overview and basically just a, a video to kind of give you some confirmation that um, this adventure or experiment of setting up a reef tank has seemed to work okay so um, definitely you know, anytime you watch these videos, uh, especially the ones that are step-by-step -step videos, you sometimes wonder what the end result is going to be, and you almost have to watch all the videos before you kind of buy into a particular person's philosophy of what's going to work. Um, the way I was able to build this tank was basically by watching a lot of videos uh, that people had taken the time to, to make and so they were very helpful and that kind of encouraged me and motivated me to do the same and I feel that uh, that I've done a good job of uh, if I can pat myself on the back of kind of explaining some things that I thought was a good idea and then documenting them for you to be able to see so we do now have corals we have just some, uh, I believe they're called zooanthins, and this is the uh, yellow tang uh, being uh, happy to, to show everybody uh, its presence in the tank. And the goby right there, and some chromises, and the shy Pacific clown is, tends to hang over here in the corner. Okay, um, just a handful of other invertebrates, uh, just snails. They clean the tank, some turbo snails uh, that I don't recommend um, just because of the fact that they do die pretty commonly because of the fact that they uh, tip over and, and get on their shell and then they're not able to upright themselves. So you're always having to fish, fish them out. And there is the Pacific clownfish, which can have a tendency to be aggressive, although mine seems to be pretty sociable and doesn't really cause any problems. So, okay, so getting back to the tank, the tank is an Aquian 210 gallon uh, reef ready tank with the overflows already installed in the back. Um, I've installed high door, uh, basically rotating heads that are water powered rotating heads and also some high door um, power heads that are recommended for the thickness of glass, the half, up to half inch glass. Um, and these, you know, you can buy them small, you can buy them large. Um, these are rather large ones. These two seem to do a rather good job of making some good wave action in the tank and just enough for the zooanthins. I probably will add some Ecotech um, power heads in there in the future. I'm running two currently with the idea of running three in the future, um, Ecotech Radions, and they do very nice to give a natural, I have them in natural mode, so they do come on uh, in the morning and uh, fade out in the evening very naturally, and so I like that a lot. I happen to utilize the coat closet next to the tank for the expansive amount of chemicals and supplies that I have. I currently have um, some cockwasser, some GFO, uh, all this stuff bought from Bulk Reef Supply, some, some magnesium, uh, some food, some extra plumbing parts, some vinegar, um, some just miscellaneous parts, instructions, extra heaters, uh, measuring cups, siphoning, funnel, uh, specimen collection cup, uh, devices to pick small objects out of the tank, uh, and cleaning devices, a step stool, a couple five gallon buckets, um, extra sock filters, I change these every thir three days, um, a cooler for the winter time when I go get specimens to kind of keep the, the temperature from dropping, and a jug that I use to put water changes and extra salt. Um, so that's kind of what I keep in there, just a whole bunch of different things. Um, that directly in front of me is the container that holds all the uh, testing supplies as far as um, all your uh, 
uh, test for nitrates and magnesium, calcium, alkalinity, that DKH, that type of thing. Okay, so down here is the five gallon jug that I have that's clear. Um, I have a funnel that is zip tied to the hose that comes out, and in there is a Tunzi osmolator pump that is the top off. So, this is the top off water. I am running Calc Wasser. Uh, right now, currently only one teaspoon because of the pretty much non existent coral demand. Um, but because of the other invertebrates and because of the agronite, um, the calcium was too low. Plus, I had not started with the reef crystal uh, mix, salt mix from the very beginning. Eventually, this wall right here will be the home of a um, Magnus um, uh, dosing pump system. So four, four different dosing pumps will go right here on this shelf. And then these are Rubbermaid shakers. Uh, they're one gallon size. I use one of them particularly for salt or Kalkwasser. The other ones are for magnesium solution, calcium, and then alkalinity. Um, I have not actually dosed alkalinity or uh, calcium, just the Kalkwasser and salt so far. So, uh, but these will be what the dosing pumps will be drawing their solution out of and then dumping into the sump. Okay? So, uh, as you can see, I have this roll that's rolled up. This is the, uh, as you can see in previous episode, of uh, the covers that I had made that Velcro across the front that work extremely well. Um, very happy with the result of that. Very happy with the spotlight here that you can see. It, I turn it on and off as needed to be able to see into the tank and work here. Um, these are Brinkman, um, ti or, excuse me, Brinks timers that come from Walmart. Um, two Phillips power strips that come from Walmart. You can see the, the water level top off system that I Velcroed on the power strip. And then I've mounted my uh, two out of three radions here. I don't believe I'm going to be able to squeeze the third one in between there, but it's going to go right there. I have them mounted underneath the screws because they, these things do come with some nice mounting tabs. Um, so just basically mount them up and underneath so that they're under the, out of the way. Um, you'll be able to see in previous episodes how the plumbing actually works and how I've uh, plumbed it. That is a small fan that was also bought from Walmart that's essential for keeping this uh, Iwaki, Japanese Iwaki pump cool. Uh, this tank right here is what I um, have not yet to have, have yet to use as a quarantine tank, but it is a tank that I uh, use to mix water. Um, so I preheat the water, I pre-mix the water, and I've been doing one every week. I've been doing a, a uh, about a ten, well actually less than ten percent water change. I'm going to actually change that to every two weeks um, because now. All the parameters for corals is now in check, so I'm going to go ahead and try to see if I can put that off for two weeks now. I just was doing it every week to try to get the water more changed over to a reef mixture. Um, so all the plumbing is working extremely well. It branches off into the back where the refugium is, and that is a LED um, LED row light that was bought, bought off of eBay that only puts out like a, a purple, royal purple and pinkish tint. Um, no white light at all. Kind of gives everything a, a really cool pinkish glow. Um, that's working extremely well. It's going to be very hard for you to see, but I will try to navigate the phone in here so you can see that the uh, cheddar and also some, some red type uh, plant material that I bought at the uh, Gerber Saltwater Warehouse is filling up this refugium rather quickly and that is to, due to this light that's working out rather well. Uh, the, the light draws very little amount of power so that's really good. That is a Hydora wave maker back there that the two Hydora uh, power heads go to. Okay and um, this pinpoint uh, pH has worked really good for me to check the daily pH um, this bio pellet reactor sort of vortex mixture type um, JB, JBL, 
JV, JVJ. Um, you can see it in previous episodes. It works extremely well. And I really don't have any complaints about anything. Uh, the vertexes are a little bit hard to get out of here. So because of the manifold being in the front, um, I don't know, possibly, I guess if I was to do over, I, I might have plumbed that to the rear. Just kind of thought of that. That would have been probably a better idea. Would be been to plumb that across the back. So if you do end up watching this whole episode or maybe start with this episode and go backwards, um, you'll be able to see that the manifold's good. Um, I wouldn't have been able to put the support maybe, but I could have maybe just tied it into the back. So that's that's up to you. But um, I basically have to just go ahead and clean the protein skimmer at the same time to be able to get these reactors. I have one reactor that's running carbon, activated carbon, um, a cheaper activated carbon right now, um, and then also GFO. It's working really good. I mean, literally I have no phosphates in the tank. I think the bioreactor is possibly uh, responsible for that at this point in time. And this is a older Euro Reef. Uh, if you want to buy one like this, it's going to be labeled Reef Dy Dynamics. So go to reefdynamics.com or Google Reef Dynamics and you'll be able to find it. I've used uh, reinforced nylon hose throughout. Um, I kind of teed off this manifold right here in the middle. Um, and then I have another spot here I can actually tee off in the future. Um, it gives it just enough, the GFO reactor and the carbon reactor, just enough flow and puts enough flow through the refugium in the back. And the refugium in the back really does not flow that much water at all, uh, which is fine with me. You know, I want that water in there, basically those plants to have those nutrients. Um, I just don't want it to be going through there very quickly. Um, I put a glass dish on the top of the uh, protein skimmer because the bubbles were actually pushing the lid off. I'm not sure why I have that problem and had to do that, but that was the case. So I just put that glass on there. Uh, the, this is the heating system that that I decided to go with, uh, with two Hager, uh, Jaeger, Eheim uh, heaters, and it's working extremely well, and it's a very reliable system. It seems to keep the water pretty much at 77 degrees, 0.4 to 0.9. Um, it does not vary that much during the day, and it's only one degree at the most. Uh, so... You know, definitely the fish don't stress out because of the water temperature changes. The um, very happy with the Tunzi water level uh, top off system. Highly recommend that. Just place basically the sensors right here in your sump, and that thing just basically dumps in right over here and above the water line, so that it doesn't siphon. Um, perfect. I mean, you know, it's it's pretty awesome. Um, just use a little um, pump in here, a little, uh, I think it's like a uh, quiet one or something like that. Not, I'm not sure what type of pump that is, but it's blue and gray. Um, and then basically I just use that to circulate the water in there more if I'm mixing the water. And then I basically take this hose and then clamp it to put it in the reservoir when I'm ready to transfer the water from the quarantine tank slash mixing tank uh, when I do water changes. I basically just siphon the water out of the tank. Sorry about the movement. Um, I just siphon the water into my measured five gallon bucket. I do it three times, fill it up three times, and then I basically just uh, turn this pump on and, and let it fill the uh, sump over here. And, and you know, and then it, um, basically unplug and plug the walkie pump in until I see water coming down um, and then I know that I'm at the right level so really easy to do water changes uh, this also acts as a nice uh, place to hold uh, pre-mixed water in case you do have some type of emergency um, and then I'm able to dump my RO water in there and hold that water and then also I have three five-gallon jugs of RO water that I keep on hand also just in case there's a uh, big concern. So that is basically it. There is some smaller, 
smaller details as far as uh, what I've been doing is changing the filter socks every three days religiously um, and I when I clean the filter socks I clean out the protein skimmer at the same time and you know it's just every time I do it I'm taking out a bunch of junk out of the tank so to me it's like filter so you know some people complain about filter socks saying that you know it's too much work and da -da -da. well you're taking organic matter out of the tank and when you're doing that it's there's just nothing wrong about that and it's well worth the work um, chemistry in the tank has been perfect um, th this is uh, I did start this with live sand uh, agronet live sand and uh, it's working really good this is uh, bulk reef supplies eco rock it's working out really good it looks really nice um, obviously I don't have any coral you know I just had the the, uh, the one coral in there and the one mushroom um, kind of using those as a litmus test just to make sure that things are going to prop propagate and, and, and do well in the tank with the water make sure the way it is tank really I mean we're talking still less less than two months that the tank has been up and running so I'm pretty happy with with the result of all of it so if you have any questions or you need any more details about how you can set your tank up this way um, let me know uh, a lot of the, the prior videos do cover things in more detail um, but yeah if you have any questions let me know I keep on getting more subscribers each day so I appreciate that and um, motivates me to do more and more uh, videos as uh, as I see more subscribers um, one thing that I need to buy is some coral dip so that I start uh, dipping the corals um, so I have a handful of other stuff that I have on order that uh, I'll be getting in soon and uh, that's it for now thank you for watching please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos in the future I will uh, be doing more and more research to try to give you more detailed advice um, and take care thanks a lot bye